Hello everyone, my name is Eddie Cuesta Jr. from Biliran National Agricultural High School and welcome to New Normal Education. So for today's lesson, is based on the most essential learning competency as part of the new normal in education. And this topic is all about the plate tectonics theory. And the objective of this lesson is to describe and relate the distribution of the active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and the major mountain belts to plate tectonics theory. So before we start, let us first assist ourselves regarding on how far is our knowledge or is your knowledge regarding on the plate tectonics theory by answering the KWL chart. So here's how to answer the KWL chart. In the first column, write things you already know about the geologic processes. In the second column, write things you want to know about plate tectonics and leave the last column blank. You will fill in things you learned at the end of the unit. So what is plate tectonics? Volcanoes and earthquakes are found across the globe. They are closely associated with activity in the crust. Now in this activity, you will plot the locations of several volcanoes and earthquakes and then use the map of those locations to reinforce our understanding on plate tectonics, volcano formation, and earthquake occurrences. There are seven relatively large plates, namely the North American Plate, the South American Plate, the Eurasian Plate, African Plate, Indian, Australian Plate, Antarctic Plate, and the Pacific Plate. But of course, let us not forget the smaller ones like the Juan de Poca Plate, Scotia Plate, Cocos Plate, Caribbean Plate, Arabian Plate, Nazca, and of course, our very own Philippine Plate. Now, these plates move very slowly, but constantly. And this movement is what we call tectonics. Thus, the theory of moving the atmospheric plate is called the plate tectonics, as you can see in the illustration. So how plate tectonics affect the occurrence of an earthquake? Hmm. So I have here a map, and this map shows the location of the plate boundaries. Now, have you noticed that there's a purple line? Yes, that purple line indicates or represents the lithospheric plate boundaries. Again, what is plate boundaries? Plate boundaries, an area on the margins of tectonic plates where seismic, volcanic, and tectonic activity takes place as a consequence of the relative motion of the plates. And on the second map is a global earthquake animation by NOAA in WS Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. Now, I want you to observe on where is the exact the location of the earthquakes. And the timeline of this earthquake is from 1901 up to the year 2000.
Let us compare the two maps. Map number one shows the world plates, while map number two shows the earthquake distributions of the world. So, how does the earthquake distributions of the world relate to the location of the world plate boundaries? Now, for us to see the relationship of the two maps, let us discuss some of these guide questions. Question number one. How earthquakes are distributed on the map? By looking and analyzing map number two, we can easily answer the question that the world's earthquakes are not randomly distributed over the Earth's surface, but they tend to be concentrated in narrow zones. And these narrow zones are found where the plate boundaries are also located. Question number two, where are earthquakes are located? Yes, some are located near the edges of the continents, some in the mid-continents, while others in the ocean, like the Mid-Atlantic Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. But not all edges of continents, mid-continents, or oceans can be places where earthquakes might occur. Question number three. Is there places on Earth where no earthquake? So here are some of the possible answers. The large part of the Pacific Ocean, the northernmost Asia, majority of Europe, eastern portion of North and South America, and the Western Africa. Question number four. Why do you think it is important for us to identify areas which are prone to earthquakes? You're right. It is very important for us to identify areas which are prone to earthquakes so that necessary precautions could be done if ever you are living in one of those places. Now, let us relate the location of the active volcanoes to the location of the plate boundaries on the world. Let us go back to map number one that shows the location of the plate boundaries on the world. Take note that the plate boundaries are an area on the margins of the tectonic plates where the seismic Volcanic and tectonic activity takes place as a consequence of the relative motion of the plates. And now, let's look at and analyze map number two that shows the location of volcanoes all over the world. Take note that the small red triangles shows the location of volcanoes all over the world. And now, let us compare the two maps. Map number 1 shows the word plates, while map number 2 shows the volcano distributions all over the world. Can you see now the relationship? To prove that there is a relationship between the plate boundaries and the volcano distributions all over the world, let us answer some of these guide questions. Question number five. 
how our volcanoes are distributed? By looking at the map, we can easily answer the question that the volcanoes are not randomly distributed. As you can see, majority of them are found along the edges of the sun continents. Question number six. So where are volcanoes located? Again, by looking and analyzing the map, majority of the volcanoes are found along the edges of some continents, particularly in the western coast of North and South America, East and Southeast Asia, where Philippines is situated. Question number seven. Based on the map, state a country that is unlikely to experience a volcanic eruption. Well, as you can see on the map, the answer may vary. So look at the upper part of the Northern America, Eastern part of South America, the uppermost part of Europe, Australia, Africa, and some part of the globe where the red triangles are not located or found. Question number eight. And now, let us compare the location of the majority of earthquake epicenters with the location of volcanoes around the world. Now, by analyzing the two maps, we can easily answer the question. That the earthquake epicenters and volcanoes are both situated at the same location. We have also here a map that shows the location of mountain ranges in the world. But what is a mountain range? Now, a mountain range is a group of mountains or a series of adjacent and or interconnected mountains forming a distinct group and usually dating from the same geologic period. While map number 2 shows the location of earthquakes in the world. And map number 3 shows the location of active volcanoes all around the world. At this point, I want you to analyze the three maps. The location of the mountain ranges, the active distribution, and the distribution of volcanoes. Is there any relationships? Question number nine. How will you relate the distribution of mountain ranges with the distribution of earth epicenters and volcanoes? And again, by examining the three maps, we can easily answer the question that the mountain ranges are found in places where volcanoes and our earthquake epicenters are also located. And finally, question number 10. So what do you think is the basis of the scientist in dividing the Earth's lithosphere into several plates? And of course, by looking again and analyzing the three maps, the scientists have concluded that the geologic activities such as seismicity or the occurrence of earthquake, volcanism, and the formation of mountains are their basis in dividing the Earth's lithosphere. To sum up our lesson, here are some important key concepts. Plates are large pieces of the upper few hundreds kilometers of Earth that move as a single unit as it floats above the mantle. The plates are in constant motion as they interact along their margins. Important geologic processes take place, such as the formation of mountain belts, 
earthquakes and volcanoes. Now, let us test your understanding on the lesson by simply answering the following questions. So here's the directions. If you're going to read the question carefully, write true if the statement is correct and false if it is incorrect. Question number one. Most active volcanoes are located along the boundaries. What do you think is the answer? Correct! It's true! Question number two. Earthquake epicenters clusters an area far from plate boundaries. What is the answer? Very good! It's false. Question number three. Volcanoes outline the Pacific Ocean forming the Pacific Ring of Fire. What do you think is the answer? Very good. True. Question number four. Earthquake epicenters mostly lie in locations near active volcanoes. And the answer? Very good. True. And lastly, question number five. Places on the earth where most mountain belts are formed mark the boundaries of the spheric place. And the answer? You're right! It's true. Congratulations! So that's how ends our lesson for today. Thank you for watching. See you and stay safe!